particularly interested in you know, the, why there's such a, a high number of non-UK nationals at the moment. And uh, Jeremy, you've answered that a lot, particularly um, people from Central and Eastern Europe. And it, one country, in particular Romania, makes up uh, nearly 20% of all rough sleepers uh, in London. Um, have you got any more to say about the reasons why um, there's been an increase in people from uh, Europe, particularly Romania, coming since two, 2010? Um, I was maybe ask David and, and Dan if you've got any comments to make on that. Sure. Um, I think, yeah, there has been the growth, the growth coming through. I think, as Jeremy mentioned, it is quite often an economic decision why people will come to London in terms of looking at in terms of round employment opportunities. We know there are a number of a number of especially Romanian <coughs> nationals who are working off the books. So you know when there are we do get encampments, especially in, in more outer London areas where people are coming are mm. coming for work, are working and actually their rough sleeping is a consequence of them working because they're working generally by the day, so they're not actually in legitimate employment. So I think we're seeing kind of a growth of that. I think it is worth noting that those numbers have dropped the last two quarters, as Jeremy mentioned. We have seen a, a drop in since after, since the decision around Brexit was mentioned and since the Home Office have changed their policy, there has been a drop. We're not sure whether the two things are linked at this stage. I think it's far too early, early to say. I mean, I think Dan could probably say more in terms of around Roots Home, the service, mm. we, the service we commissioned that works specifically with this group. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I won't add too much more to the reasons why people uh, are coming here, but uh, I suppose the challenges for that group, for Romanian nationals, for example, is... Uh, what offer to make people uh, for a return home to the home country is often sleeping on the streets um, for small chunks of time in London, earning some money, sending it home uh, is is better than uh, being back in their, in their home country. So the options they have available to them, or the options they perceive they have available to them, are not as good as being being here, staying in an encampment, or staying uh, on the streets and working. So it's very, very challenging to make an offer to someone to to help them off the streets when they, they're not necessarily wanting to engage with that offer. So. Again, I think it's important to, within that group of Romanians, there's different groups too. So if you look at the, we do a lot of work, Tenfield does a lot of work in outer London boroughs where there are encampments of Romanian rough sleepers. What, one thing I would note is that um, far from some of the stereotypes around people sponging off of the welfare benefit system, these are people that have got an incredible work ethic. So when we go and meet them, we have to be there at five in the morning because they're getting up at six in order to work um, in construct construction sites, uh, doing gardening jobs, doing car wash jobs, and they're away from the encampment by six and they're, they're working a very long shift. Now, the worry about it is, of course, often it's off, it's off the car's work. They're not registered to work and, and that's a problem. Um, and the money's been sent home. They're managing to get jobs very, very quickly. Um, they're not drifting around London. They're usually in a very localised position in, in, in the capital. And we've just done a piece of research, actually, shortly to be launched around the encampments, because that isn't a, a, a situation that can continue, partly because, obviously, these people are out open to exploitation at one end of things. They're, they're certainly getting paid below minimum wage. And they're giving the worst jobs on the site. But also, these are, these are public spaces, aren't they? These are parks they're sleeping rough in. And, and in order to support communities, we also have to do something about those encampments. Um, I don't know what the solution is, actually, because in a way, the outreach workers can't provide the normal support we would to vulnerable people. They're there to talk to people, and obviously many of my colleagues can speak the languages, and we employ people who from the Central and Eastern Europe to work with us. Uh, but I think ultimately um, that is a, is a real challenge and one of the proposals that people have put up is some very, very basic accommodation for that group. That brings its challenges too because that could create an incentive for more people to come over. So this is one where I think it, for us it's a dilemma and a work in progress in terms of tackling the issues because it cannot be enough to close sites down to see people displaced to a park half a mile away. So, so these will be people really who are you know, desperate to earn a bit of money to send back to Romania, but are willing to work, you know, in, in jobs that are you know, that would be below minimum wage. Exactly. So, it's, it's so, so, so you get up from the camp, you go along to you go up at Wix. This is you know, literally the situation mm. uh, where where people are going, where the, the the men in the vans are going to get their materials to do a job. You get picked up. There's a bit of haggling. You go go on and do the job on site. And they're regarded as, you know, absolutely got the work ethic, so they're, they're valuable members of the workforce in those, in those ways, uh, in those terms. But of course, open to exploitation, 
all the issues around health and safety that you'd naturally be concerned about for this group are there. Um, and they are returning money home. So it's a, in, in many ways they're regarded as successful in their own community back in Romania. But would they be people who would take the help of no first night out or no second night out? Or are they more people that would you'd put in the category of long-term uh, rough sleepers? I mean, the, the people that I've met, they won't accept the offer because the offer would be generally to help them to return home. Okay. And they don't want to return home. Mm. So, if they um, if they're working, which again I concur with Jeremy, you know, people will move and they'll set up encampments, generally around areas where they can, you know, there is a Wix located or there is, you know, a kind of an employment site. So we see m many fewer people in Tower Hamlets because we don't have that mm. sort of those employment um, opportunities. But if you offer things to people, they're scared of services. They don't want to take up to go to their second night out because the offer is to return back to Romania. Mm. And I've gone out both with Thames Reach and St Mungo's to Romania to look at what the resources are like there, what the partnerships are like. There's been funding for transnational partnerships, um, funding for places that people can return to. But it's very minimal offer back home. Mm. So people don't, you know, they're not taking up our offers here because they're not what they want. Mm. They, want they want free accommodation so they can continue working and send things home. And that is that, there is that one group. I mean, we do have other people from other, you know, other, we have other Romanians that aren't working and we have other people from across Europe who aren't working. And on an individual basis, we're offering them support services back home and sometimes they take those and sometimes you know, we work with the home officer on enforcement. Mm. There is a, there is a, there's a gap for this client group as well in terms of what offer we can make them here. People who are often coming here are work ready, but their their access to welfare benefits has changed, um, so they they can't access welfare benefits. So they're in a bit of a bind where they um, are work ready, but they've got no accommodation uh, to be able to stay to be able to then access benefits and support and access accommodation. So. As Catherine's saying, the, op the options that we can offer are really, really limited. Uh, and often people are put off by coming into services like No Second Night Out because amidst their communities, uh, they may say, you know, if you're offered this service, don't take it because it means an automatic reconnection, which isn't always the case because we assess each, each case on a case-by-case -case basis uh, to see what their merits and entitlements are. And, you know, it's not always a return home. Sometimes people are entitled to, to services in the UK and often we've got people who are... Uh, you know, they haven't just, just arrived, they've been in accommodation, lived here for many years, and their entitlements have changed and they've fallen out of accommodation. Uh, so, and then the offer to them, someone who's been here eight, ten years of a return home, is very, very difficult when you've built a life, a life in the UK. I think our research, also, our research was recently done did show that most of the people we talked to would be prepared to work legally on the cards. So that, and they would be, would be prepared to pay for accommodation, but the kind of amount they want to pay is eight pound a night, eight, nine pound a night. So it's, as we know, that's very hard to uh, Not really pull available off in London. London. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> yeah just, I've got one, one more question. I mean, uh, Jeremy, you said earlier that, uh, and, and David as well, that the number is slightly going down in the last couple of quarters. Um, with you know, Britain coming out of the European Union, which will happen in, in the next couple of years, do you see that, that figure going down continue to go down before the exit actually takes place and I mean what what how do you see the figures um, the number of people sleeping rough as particularly from the European Union um, changing before brexit actually happens over the next two years and then perhaps afterwards as well after 2019 I think at this stage is so difficult to know for sure like I say we've seen this this slight reduction in the past past two quarters but we don't know whether that is going to continue and talk, talking to wider colleagues in national government, talking to colleagues in the Home Office, they don't know where, if you know, what the situation is going to be in terms of immigration and individuals coming coming to this country, whether it's going to go up just before just before if you know and just before Brexit, just before that stage, or whether actually what we're seeing now is going to be an ongoing trend and actually numbers are going to continue to drop. I think it's far too early for us to say. It's also far too early for us to say what happens when that does take place in terms of what will be people's rights how will that all work and so we need to work with colleagues in in the home office to try and work out and map out actually when that does happen 
what does that mean for us in terms of around services? What does that mean for people that are coming to this country who might happen to end up rough sleeping? What should our service offer be for those individuals? We also need to be mapping that out as well. So I think, unfortunately, yeah, it's a bit too early for us to say at this stage. But also, I keep going with my theme about looking at the, the detail. The, the Polish rough sleeping figures have been 8, eight to 9% of the rough sleeping population now for about, what, three years? So I think each group, each national group, needs to be looked at slightly differently. And I, I was reading in the paper this week, actually, actually last week, how the flow of Poles overall coming to the country has begun to change in the other direction. So it could be that in terms of us working with our sleepers, we pick up on these trends a, a bit earlier um, than the, the national figures, where obviously there's time in terms of, um, in terms of